Okay, so uh, this video here deals with the applications <coughs> excuse me, of quadratic functions. And before we actually get into these word problems, it's a good idea to maybe review a few of the basics here. Uh, the general form of the quadratic function looks like this, where we've got uh, ax squared plus bx plus c. Uh, one of the best pieces of information we can get from this is the y-intercept, which is just that c value. Okay, uh, another form of the quadratic function is uh, the standard form where we've got the um, vertex here. The vertex is actually the h and the k value, right? Um, the next thing, uh, key points of interest. So when we're solving these quadratic functions or graphing these quadratic functions, there's a few pieces uh, of it that are uh, of significance. And the first one being that vertex, okay? So it is that max or min value. So. Uh, if it opens down, right, it's got a maximum value. If it opens uh, up, then it's got a minimum value, okay? Uh, and that vertex is always HK, right? Uh, next thing is the intercept. So uh, always just one Y-intercept, right? It always crosses the Y-axis once. And that Y-axis is where uh, X equals zero. And over here, X equals zero. So that Y-axis always find it if you just make x equals zero. Uh, the x-intercept, so uh, we that is when y is equal to zero. So if you look here, we have y equals zero, y equals zero. Notice that in both of these situations, it crosses twice, but you can have it crossing uh, just once if it bounces on either side, either going down or going up. It can also never actually cross uh, if it opens up and the vertex is above the x-axis or if it opens down and the vertex is below the x-axis, we have no x-intercepts, okay? Uh, what else we got here? So uh, the axis of symmetry is a, another thing, right? The axis of symmetry is the line that runs right through the vertex here at all these points runs right through the vertex, okay, vertical line. And that's always in the form x equals whatever that number is. Say that's one, two, so x equals two, okay? Uh, the next thing, domain and range. Uh, all your x values can be, what all your y values can be. Uh, for the majority of these, x will be all real numbers. If you're talking about real life situations when we're dealing with that first quadrant, uh, all, both these numbers have to be positive, basically, okay? Uh, and completing the square, that's a big part of this, okay? That's getting from this, um, where are we here? That gets us from this form, the general form, to the standard form so that we can find the vertex. Here we can get the y-intercept, put it in this form, we can find the vertex, we get the shape, we can graph it. Um, and that's basically where we're at right now, okay? So when we start solving these word problems, it's uh, these points of interest that we're usually looking for, the vertex or the, uh, the x-intercept or the y-intercept, okay? So let's have a look here at one. So a farmer has 80 meters of fencing and wants to make the largest enclosure he can. Are you using, using an existing fence line? So we'll, we'll draw an existing fence line and we'll draw an enclosure, a rectangular enclosure. It says he had 80 meters of fencing. So see if you can get something working here. Maybe pause the video, give it a shot. Okay, so I'm gonna call this X and this X. So if I had 80 for the whole thing, that leaves me with 80 minus two X for that second, uh, for that longer side. And then we're looking to maximize area. So area is simply length times width, right? So we write a quadratic here. We'll get minus 2x squared plus 80x. And like with all of these, what we have to do is complete the square. So I'm going to take the negative, uh, sorry, the negative 2 out, uh, x squared minus 40x plus a number minus a number. Uh, this is going to be negative 2x minus 20 all squared. Uh, 20, that's going to be 400 and 400. Uh, half of 40 is 20. 20 squared is 400. 
uh, when that comes out it's going to be plus 800 so that means that my vertex is 20 and 800 which means that the dimensions are 20 20 and that leaves me with 40 here 20 times 40 is uh, 800 okay so the dimensions would be 20 by 40 okay now let's have a look at another one here we go so uh, Murray fires a gun from the top of a building blah 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 height of a bullet model by the height of okay so we've got a function here right t in seconds uh, h is in feet looks like uh, we know that the y-intercept is 50 so it means at the top of the building right if you imagine this thing that means the y-intercept is 50 here and he's gonna go something like that okay who knows if it goes up or not uh, but we'll be able to see that when we find the vertex right so what we need to do is change this and make it into vertex form so we'll take out a negative 16 uh, that'll leave me with t squared minus um, so let's have a quick look here 384 divided by 16 uh, gives me 24 so minus 24 t plus a number minus a number and I'm bringing that 50 out towards the end so half of 24 is 12 squared 144 144 negative 16 t minus 12 all squared uh, and this is going to be negative 144 times negative 16 gives me 2304 plus 2304 plus 50 so the final version here here we go uh, plus 2354 so um, what that looks like is the vertex here is 12 and 2354 Looks like he actually fired it up then, right? Boom. So it went up to a maximum height of 2354, and it took uh, 12 seconds to get there. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at this, and there's not actually any questions here. Uh, but the question could be asked was, what was the maximum height of the bullet? Uh, that would be this 2354. It took... 12 seconds to get there okay and you could find out when the bullet would hit the ground by making y equals zero or making this whole thing here equal to zero okay let's look at a couple more questions here uh we have one of these selling questions okay uh they're selling 300 units for 10 bucks each last year so if you're looking at a revenue it's uh, how much you sell it for by times the number that you sold. So in this case, it's $10 times 300. So they were making $3,000. Okay. They were making $3,000. What he's realized is some data that he took or that some data that was collected and it realized that for every $1 increase, okay, uh, uh, by $1, you would sell 10 less. Okay. In this next season. So, uh, you'd make X each uh, uh, each increase, okay? So now your new revenue would be, okay, so it's $10 plus uh, one for every increase, so $1 for every X. So if X was two, it'd be 12 bucks. X was three, it'd be 13 bucks, right? And then we had 300 that we sold, and now we're losing 10 for every increase. So what we end up having is a quadratic. We're looking to make a quadratic. So that we can then uh, complete that square and find the vertex right so if you multiply this out you get 3000 uh, minus 100x plus 300x uh, minus 10x squared you rearrange it you get minus 10x squared plus 200x plus 3000 okay so now what we can do is factor out the negative 10x squared minus 20x plus a number, minus a number, and we took that 3,000 out. Half of 20, 10 squared is 100, and 100, we're almost there. X minus 10 all squared, that's going to become plus 1,000, so I'm going to have plus 4,000 here. Okay, your vertex is 10, 4,000, which means that your new ticket price, you're going to raise it by $10. Okay, so you're going to charge 
20 bucks a CD. You've doubled the price, right? And you're going to make $4,000 as opposed to what you were making before of $3,000. 20 bucks a CD. 10 means uh, you increased it by $10. So 10 times 10 means you've sold to 100 less. So you're selling 200 at 20 bucks, but you're still making four grand, right? So that's the idea, maximizing your profit. Okay, so here we go. Last question, then um, we can move on with the next section. Here we go. A suspension bridge uh, has cables. See if you can draw this, okay? In the shape of a parabola. The ends are 12 meters above the end of the, like above the bridge. So here we'll just draw a bridge, okay? And we'll draw a parabola that looks like this. Here it's 12 meters, here it's three meters, here it's 12 meters. Okay, and you got the whole thing being 60 meters wide. Now, part of the problem would be to see uh, where to put the axis. Now, you don't necessarily know where to put it. You could put it here. You could put it here. I'd have a tendency to put it. How am I going to do this? Um, well, like I said, we could put it anywhere. But why not make everything positive here, okay? Let's just make everything positive. And that means I'm going to make this the x-axis here. This the y-axis here. So this right here would be 12. Um, this right here would be 30 and 0. This, what would the coordinates of this be? If that's 30, that's 60. And how high up it is, is it? 12, right? So now you have this parabola. And all you have to do now is make an equation using that information. So your vertex now is 30 and 0. So if you go y is equal to a bracket x minus h, which is 30, all squared plus 0. It doesn't need to be there. Now pick a point, this point right here, 0 and 12. Let's plug it in. Your y is 12. Your a is what you're looking for. x is 0. So you got 30 all squared. So 12 is equal to 900a. Or a is equal to 12 over 900. Does that reduce? Let's have a look. 12 divided by 900. Uh, let's see if we can change it. 1 over 75. So 1 over 75. So now the equation would be y is equal to a is 1 over 75. x minus 30 all squared. Final the boom bang. Now, if you end up putting your vertex or your uh, axis here, it's going to be a little bit different. But the key here is that A value. A few questions, folks. Hope those help. If not, um, you know what? Uh, we can work on them in class. Uh,